What are, your, what are your initial thoughts on it? The weight's not too bad. I mean, that's relative to how long you're holding it. For the, the application, I, I feel like so far, first impression is just holding it. Not bad. The shield at work, and, you know, I have the window, and this is pretty significantly smaller than the one I use. And this is heavier. What's the rating on this? Three plus, five, five, six green tip and 7.62 full metal jacket. It's probably a higher rating than the one that I use at work, but let's we'll shoot with it. basic stance I'm trying to get as much as this in front of me blocking the important stuff I'm trying to figure out how far how close what kind of angle I want the shield at it's a lot easier to shoot than the one at work with this one being significantly smaller a tighter package the one I use a lot that right side of the shield when I'm looking through the window of the shield it comes in contact with the arm after a long period of time when it starts getting heavy it starts like cutting off like blood circulation to my arm and it's hard to really maintain a good stable position so with this being significantly smaller I'm able to get a pretty good position compared to the one that's bigger I mean I try to I'm trying to use it like I, I use the other one but obviously with it being so uh, compact it affords me to get a, a more of a natural position I really have three different ideas in mind as i look at this shield and just kind of hold it in my hands and, and mess around with it on on ways that i feel like you could achieve you know desired results so i'm gonna work through through those three different methods that i have in my mind and just see how they kind of play out here <laughs> I chose three different ways of shooting on the shield that I thought would be options, right? And and those those methods with this particular shield in particular was, you know, the more traditional method, which is basically just straight out looking at your dot, right? And then the second method was using this lip here and then covering up, you know, my body with the shield and my head as much as possible and then still finding my dot through the shield. And then that third method that I did was I basically used the shield as a barricade and then was able to find my dot and put rounds on the target. I think with this shield in particular, you have those options, right? Uh, the other shields that we have and that we know of that we use, you only have one option. And it's the traditional option, which is to come out with your dot that way. The downside is that you have to expose yourself with this shield a little bit more than you would with the other shields because you're hiding behind the shield and there's a piece of glass that you can see through. If you wanted to use this shield and do the most effective job at minimizing your exposure possible, barricading it up on the shield like this is a legitimate way of doing that and accomplishing that. But also keep in mind that once you get here and you're up on the shield like this, now you're kind of moving on a turret, right? And so you're kind of limiting your field of view, um, but that's also an option for you. I actually kind of like coming across my body and looking through my dot this direction. It seems like it's actually more comfortable to hold the shield. In the unboxing video that I did, I talked about this crossbar right here and why nobody I know likes the crossbars to be straight because they're taxing on your arm. Because you, you want to be as comfortable as possible and it's actually starting to hurt, is you end up turning the shield to what's more natural for your arm, angle for your arm to sit in, right? So all three of those are options when you're deciding to use this shield and if you have to engage something or come up on your dot. Every, everything has pros and cons. Obviously what you're trying to achieve with that barricaded position, you're covering your face area. But when you're compromising your your stance, your arm angle, you're gonna have more perceived recoil. I'm protecting myself more, but follow on shots are gonna be a little more difficult due to the, the rise of the weapon because your, your arm is compromised. If you are going to be using a shield every day for your everyday job, like maybe you run warrants or something, this shield is gonna be pretty heavy and pretty cumbersome. Now, 
there are better options, you know, I think for that task, but if you have no options, this shield is $450, right? So this is, this is your option, right? Because of the weight of the shield, it's just not going to be something that I would choose if I had a choice to pick up and go, you know, clear large, large structures with this shield. Now, I think that this shield is, would be great for what it's meant to be for really, which is rapid deployment. So you're on patrol, shots are fired, active shooter, or, you know, domestic call, somebody shot somebody, right? You pull up and you grab this thing out of your trunk and, and you use it for the reasons that we already stated. I don't know if there are any other shields that offer this protection for the price that these are sold for. Quite frankly, street cops are not gonna pay $1,500 to $4,000 from a company to have a shield in their trunk, right? But this is a legitimate option because the, the protection that it offers and the price. Thank you.